Good evening. We're we are. We got stars. I don't know what they are. I want stars. What does that do? Thank you, Marie, for the Thank you, Marie. Stars. That's what the noise was. Oh, know. oh, that freaked us out backstage. Cheers, yeah. <laughs> I was like, I hear a noise. Oh, good evening, everyone. Oh. How are we all doing? Right, we've got. I'm going to read this correctly. A proctophilic necrophile here tonight. So, Tom Peppard and sorry, what's your name, sir? Joseph Charman. Joseph Charman, nice to meet you. Uh, so, yeah, how are you guys doing? Are you well? My toilet overflowed. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's awful. <laughs> Dare we ask how. <laughs> There's another noise. Well, big thumps. No, actually, it's toilet roll. Toilet roll. Oh, uh, yeah, that'll do it. Yeah. Imagine I've had quite the stressful day. <laughs> <laughs> Too much wiping, dude. So you're going to be hurting from the back, and now your house is flooded. <laughs> uh, it's not flooded anymore. But it's fixed. Ah. How long yeah. did that take? Well, I had to get the council over. Oh, I, I pooed the basically, and I just demolished it. <laughs> yeah. The amount of poo, it was just that fucking long. <laughs> I was recording my next album. Looks. <laughs> microphone down the bowl. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad to hear that's at least remedied somewhat, I guess. <laughs> right, so, yeah, um, obviously, Tom, we've had you on a few times before, uh, more so for the acoustic stuff, so today we'll be talking a bit more about um, the band, uh, how that came about, and uh, sort of all your inspirations leading up to that, and obviously your first show as well. So, um, I will hand over to Callum, who hopefully will be able to lead us from there. We can start with your performance at Melts and Masses. How, how did that go? For you? Was it your first performance you've done as the... Well, yeah, the, the, the Metal to the Masses performance was, was it was um, our first live, live go at it. Uh, we weren't entirely sure what to expect as our, our heat had, um, I, I don't want to sound like a dick to the other bands, but we were kind of put in the softest heat, like John were wise. So we, the openers were absolute zero, which are mega talented kids, but they are kids nonetheless. Um, there was a band called Break the Slate who are like this awesome grunge rocky type band. You quite like Break the Slate. Yeah, all right. I, I, I'm upset that their song Mean Bullet wasn't actually called Meat Bullet because I, I was completely. <laughs> I quite like the song called The Singer on a really dirty tone. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Dirty tone. Um, it's not even Berlin. Uh, and then we had like Monaco. No, we had Struggler, who were like this really good metalcore band. And then because Metal to the Masses, the way it works, random draw on the day, our first show, we also closed the show. And we had all the fun drunk people. Tell us we were disgusting, and that's a good compliment when you do raw grind music. It is a good compliment. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, I'll tell you what, guys. Yeah. Um, while we're while we're there, gore grind music. So this was something completely new to me. I didn't know anything about this. Could you tell the guys who are watching right now how you define gore grind music? What makes it sound the way it sounds? Right. It, which one of us is going to attempt this? Well, okay. So <laughs> gore grind is a combination of grindcore and death metal and grindcore comes from punk music and it's obvious what death metal comes from isn't it? um the, 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 i heard death metal started with a band death no actually it started from possessed oh shut the fuck up <laughs> <laughs> yeah so gore go, go grind is essentially so Grindcore, which is, that's your napalm deaths for more extreme punk. Uh, gore grind basically started because these bands wanted to sound like napalm death, but they started using pitch shifty vocals, started putting actual gore on their covers. The whole thing came from Carcass, um, which if you haven't heard Carcass, they're fucking great. Nowadays, they're much more death metal than, um, than gore grind. Can't remember what the name of that first, first release was. Oh, well, um, just save a life. Week of future faction. There you go. Week of future faction. It's uh, great when you can't pronounce anything and you're in a genre where all of the song names and album names have long words. 
<laughs> but with the album cover, that kind of created the whole idea of Gorgon, because that album cover is essentially just a collage of, I think, if I'm correct, it was like his sister worked in a morgue or a doctor's surgery, and he yeah. took, they took pictures of actual corpses <laughs> and just made a collage of it, stuck it on an album cover to be as shocking as possible, and went, here you go, here's, here's a whole new genre. It's a, it's a relatively new genre, but the, the, the whole idea of Gorgon is to be extremely shocking it, extremely brutal and be, be completely and utterly inaudible. <laughs> <laughs> cool, man. Yeah, thank you. And um, your guy's name, we have to ask, how did the name come about? I, I can I can answer this one because I made the name. You did. I made the name of Dr. Philip Necrophile. Um, so, that I listened to a podcast called The Last Podcast on the Left. And they've done an episode on necrophilia, which don't look that up, kids, but it's basically when people really enjoy dead bodies. And, and there's actually a sub, I hate saying shit like this, there's a sub fetish of necrophilia for people who get off to the smell produced by dead bodies, um, which uh, is called epoptophilic necrophilia. <laughs> However, necrophilia is the fetish for farts, and the <laughs> farts. So technically, what our name means is someone who gets off to the smell of zombie farts. <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> I came across because I was listening to this. I was listening to this podcast, and I thought that actually sounds really cool. That sounds like a great name for a band. And then. I started recording, um, I was, I've been trying to record my solo stuff, and I couldn't do it, and I started recording just a bunch of noise, and then this motherfucker messaged me and said, you know, if you ever want to do that live, I'm a drummer. And we, I went, okay, sod it, we'll, we'll do that. And then I show, I shown up at, um, at, his, at his old man's house with my bass, uh, the pitch shifter pedal on the vocals, and we'd done a little yeah, so we realised we were really noisy and pretty good. And I went, well, fuck, guess we've got to give this a proper go now. And here we are, being interviewed by the best band I know. From Bournemouth, yeah. Ah, man, that's, that's fantastic. That's yeah, fantastic. Um, yeah, so um, we, we sort of already touched on your guys' first show happening the other week. Um but yeah, tell us a bit about the live experience, because um, Tom, if I remember rightly, you, you've been sort of looking to have a, a full band um, kind of experience for quite a while now. How was it on stage? Really fucking good, <laughs> to be fair. Yeah, well, <laughs> well, <laughs> the biggest god damn, gosh darn smile on our face when we finished that set. Yeah, we did. Uh, mm. Now, it's, it's like, I, I, I've said it before about the solo music, but I've but it's even more so when it comes to band work. But it is like the best drug you can ever take. It fucking improved my mental health. It, it, did, it, did. it really did improve my mental health as well. I mm. I haven't had hardly as many episodes. No, and I haven't been doing barcode things. No. <laughs> <laughs> but but oh. no, it, 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 the whole experience and the fact as well that because we are such a niche, such a niche genre. And like the people in the audience were genuinely going ape shit about it. We 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 recorded the whole set and uploaded it onto our YouTube. And there's one part where a guy just walks up to the front and is like, "Do you guys play at kids' parties?" And we were like, "Absolutely." Absolutely. If you want to pay your kids for bar mitzvah, we're keen. But like the the reaction to doing death metal live. Well, doing like extreme, yes, that's 50p. But <laughs> we're actually doing extreme metal music live, and the audience, because audience for extreme metal bands are always done. I mean, oh, they're not ma massively extreme, but do you guys remember? Do you guys remember? I want to say it was either two years ago, it might have been last year, but we done a Melisa band, What Beat, What Beats Cancer. Yes. Uh, yeah, I. I think it was Dralian headlining, you guys were sub-headlining, Perdician and myself. That's and right, yeah. 
during Pedition, me and my mate Chris packed out the Yu-Gi-Oh cards and started having a Yu-Gi-Oh duel in the middle of the month. <laughs> that is the bang average thing that happens in extreme metal gigs. But one of the videos we got sent was a guy just beating up the floor. <laughs> like, <laughs> we're laughing because it's true. And it was the same, same guy who said he was like this for Yeah, like, it, that's the audience reaction. It's almost like they just want to do anything else. But listen, and I love it. <laughs> <laughs> well, that sounds anyway. really awesome. It sounds like a fun first show, though. Like. Look, my wrist. It hurt my hand. I'm it's normally quite good at doing that. Yeah, but the thing is, the reason why I can blast so fast is because I fingered loads of bass on it. Whoa! Well, that... <laughs> <laughs> That's how you learn how to blast beat. I, I have it on good authority. Well, yeah. I, I, I did tell him before our first set that it gets very hot on stage and I might just perform naked with a kitchen apron on. <laughs> <laughs> That's and, goals. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the second the sweat hits my bottom, that's when you know the, the, the drop is coming. <laughs> <laughs> you can live up to the name, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but no, we, 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 like, I've contacted a bunch of a bunch of different venues and whatnot, and loads of places want us to play. Mm -hmm. But it's really odd because lo loads of places that want us to play are like, we just don't have any gigs that suit you. <laughs> if you know what I mean? So, like, because we... We we contacted a, I contacted a bunch in Bournemouth, and yeah. there was one people like, oh, we've got this tribute band playing if you want to open for them, and it was like <laughs> with, with this pop, like a Bon like, Jovi tribute, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, I I think it was it wasn't Bon. I can't remember who it was. It was like um, it was like a meatloaf or I think it happened Tall. I think it was Tall Play. But, <laughs> yeah, it was like do what we can do. And the thing is, is, as much as I want to do another gig. You don't want to look like a tit in front of people who expect completely different stuff. Festival mm. line, you know, different bit, different bands, it, it's fine. But with yeah. a certain, like, it's, if, if we want to open up for Madonna, it's, <laughs> don't you? <laughs> yeah, you've got to be in the right crowd, honestly. Yeah, it's very true. That. Um, so I'm just going to quickly catch up on a few comments, chaps, while we've got it. So we've had a lot of hellos from everyone, so good evening, everyone. Um, if you missed the intro, we hope you're all well. Uh, Marie has said, of course, uh, Tom made the name. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And she also says, come play Rock Beats Cancer, I'll let you play. So that would be <laughs> that would be a pretty wild one. Like. <laughs> but on that, we have got a... Um, they're not Gore Grind, but they're, they're a slam band. I know, but, you know, it's pretty oh. similar. But we've got uh, Embolectomy. I think they're a yes. space band. They they play down here every now and then. But they never get to play shows either. <laughs> they only play like Melt to the Masses. I think it was their last time I saw them, but I haven't seen them on any other lineups. They are very good. I, I, don't, I, can't remember if, I can't remember if it's Bournemouth based, but I know um, To Obey a Tywin, I want to say as well. Oh, uh, yeah. The, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they Do you know who's a bit? Oh, mate. They're tight. They're good. <laughs> They're yeah. really good. But, but now, like, um, 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 um to me at Ace. S slam. Slam is like one of our favourite genres. We're, we're probably going to end up taking this in a flammy sort of way. You know? <laughs> That's how we're doing the vocals. It's just making it an instrument. I'm wearing a slam shirt. Probably <laughs> <Why> not. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Got him. Hey, that'd be a good lineup for you guys, maybe though. Is um, yeah, Endelect to me, you guys, and possibly to a bear tyrant down somewhere like Bear Cave or Anvil or something might be worth uh, getting in touch with those bands and, and see if you can get that going, boys. I, I could always open up my other self. Oh yeah, called Comfort. Well, I could open with Comfort. Comfort. <laughs> it kind of is that what happens before. <laughs> <laughs> now i i started i started a solo like grind noise project um years years ago and i've only just managed to get a full ep demo out which is getting released june 18th um with necromagnetic records but i sent it to the guy and i was like look here's here's what i want i don't want to make money off it i just want it to be out what do you think 
and he'd read the name Kumpar and was like, yeah, I'm the least of this. <laughs> Hell yeah, dude. <laughs> <laughs> you can imagine some poor guy who's just trying to get off on what he likes and, and, <laughs> and your music comes up instead on the hub. <laughs> <laughs> Naughty video, it's all going well, and all of a sudden you just hear, and you're like, no, <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> we don't like, you know, <laughs> this is definitely going to be the first, the first 18 plus live stream. But you know, when you're right at, right at the climax and the camera angle cuts, it's just the guy's face going, <laughs> oh. and you're like, <laughs> <laughs> not now, anything but now. <laughs> <laughs> Am I, am I gay now? One of us. Have to just to the guys. <laughs> it feels like a team effort at that point. But... Anyway, <laughs> Calum, I'll hand over to yeah. you. <laughs> we have had another question in. Mm. From Carl, Carl Flynn. He's mm. asked. Cool. Serious question. Good, Carl. What do you think of the Pedestrian. <laughs> How do you say that word? Pedestrianisation. Pedestrianisation of Norwich City Centre. <laughs> <laughs> Something tells me that's not a serious question. Um, but we will find out actually in a few weeks. Quick plug: we are playing at the <laughs> where are we playing the brick. Oh, I always forget the name. My brain. But the Rock Soft Festival up in Norwich on the May the fifth. It's a Sunday, so come along if you can make it. It's going to be real good fun. I think it's the Brickmakers and B2 Norwich. So we're going to go and investigate yeah. Norwich City Centre and see what the fuck's going on. Fuck Norwich. No, I no, I like Norwich. I fucking hate Norwich. I'm not a big fan of a pedestrianisation of Norwich from Carl. I've never been to Norwich, but I fucking hate it. <laughs> you know yeah, what? I have no idea. I don't think I've ever been to Norwich either. Where is Norwich? Uh, apparently Norwich is full of incest. Everyone says that about everywhere now. Honestly, we went up to Bridgewater, which is full of incest, the other day. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, no, oh. no, we were told we were educated on a new phrase. It was um, NFB, and it was normal yeah. for Bridgewater. Yeah, I hadn't ever heard that one before. <laughs> <laughs> which is that? my favorite. NFG. It's normal for free, man. <laughs> oh, we've been around through as well. <laughs> Normal for Taunton. No, I think the fucking images that you've got. Oh, NFT. Oh, yeah, I've always wondered what NFTs NFT. were. <laughs> no, they're talking about Ben Sevenfold, like what to a tour, where if you bought a VIP package, the only difference was you've got an NFT bit of art there. <laughs> yeah. That's like, that's like saying. We should do that. No, but that's like saying that's like saying you can either have a really sad wank or have a sad clown. <laughs> you do all that. That's what we've got the other week. Once the live stream's finished, I'm having the sad clown come in. Carl says, Bob's your uncle and your dad. <laughs> nice. <laughs> and me now. <Nan>. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and all of the above, yeah. And me, I'm also... my family tree, I've just got the trunk. <laughs> I'm, I'm also Bob. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> my dad, my uncle, and my nan. Callum, back to you, man. It's like having a really... You can either have a really sad wank with the album really, really shit, or you can have an NFT included, which is a really sad clown giving you the sad wank. Well, the thing is, Avenged Sevenfold's new album is fucking bizarre. It have, is bizarre. No, I don't listen to them. Don't. I don't listen to Foxy. Apparently, Foxy. they were on a DMT trip when they were writing that. Which makes sense. <laughs> Aren't they always on drugs? I feel like they must be at this point. I thought they were a I Christian stopped. band. Get me a nightmare. <laughs> Maybe. I thought they were nice, honest Christians. <laughs> oh, All I know sorry. is that they are from Florida, so... Florida man, yeah. local man. Um, it all makes sense. <laughs> crocodile toilets. <laughs> this is how we go. Crocodile toilet. Crocodile toilet. This is how we get our song notes. Hear, hear me out, guys. Band, new band right here. Crocodile toilet. Crocodile okay. toilet. 
one gig, this is the gig, boom, break up, <laughs> over. <laughs> We're done. <laughs> Here's our bassist. Oh, I'm the bassist now. Actually, no, <laughs> you do. No, I, I am the bassist now. <laughs> well, just because you're better. <laughs> Oh, Callum, it's time to get that five string, bro. It's time. It's happened. It's happening. It's coming. Oh, <laughs> what? <laughs> it's going to come. It's coming in the post. Yeah. Come. Nice. Come. <laughs> this is a very serious interview about a very serious band, as you can tell. Yeah. <laughs> we are <all> really... <laughs> <laughs> Marie says always the best lives when Tom is on. Yeah, we know. Yeah, <laughs> we know. <laughs> Who said that? <laughs> uh, Marie, Marie. You're damn Marie, you know it. <laughs> <laughs> Marie did also say you should go play Rock Beats Cancer. Oh, I'd, be, I'd be happy to play Rock Beats Cancer again. I would. That was Bournemouth, play. Yeah, all right. That, last time we booked a hotel and I got so shit faced because I realised that I could drink and play. Last time I went to Bournemouth, my toilet overflowed. <laughs> 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 what is this recurring theme and how is it happening? Like, <laughs> it's I'll tell you it. Bournemouth has a really nice aquarium. It does, and a very <laughs> nice water. There's a big sea turtle there, and it really makes me smile. Both times I've been down there, I have gone to the aquarium, pointed at the sea turtle with Katie next to me, and gone, "That's a sea turtle," and I've never. <laughs> I've never been more happy. And both times I go, wow, I didn't know they get that big. And I tell you what, if I play Bournemouth again, I'm going to that aquarium. I've it's never been to that aquarium. I've lived here my whole life. I've never been to that aquarium. <laughs> I think I if need you to go. go. Yeah. Uh, I like turtles. You would never believe how big the sea turtles <laughs> get. <laughs> yeah, this... I didn't know they could get that big. I don't... <laughs> Never seen a sea turtle yet. He's in a band called Sea Turtle One. Like, come on, boy. Sea I've seen sea turtles, it's not the Bourne of Sea Turtle. I need to meet the Bourne of Sea Turtle. I know the Weymouth crab. There's a big fuck off crab in Weymouth Sea Life Center that was there for like 20 years when I was growing up. That's a big crab. That is a big crab. I, I think I know the crab. Oh, Spider crab, isn't it? <laughs> They're nasty, dude. <laughs> yeah. oh, I Oh, I think I've some like you know what they used to say like crab meets brain food. He's hungry again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> say crab meets brain food, and I used to eat a lot of like crab and like prawn and stuff because apparently it made me smarter. I thought you said crab and goyle then. <laughs> <laughs> That's Harry Potter, isn't it? That's wrong. Did you know that the, the, the reason that the saying is carrots make you see in the dark? Is actually from the British Army. Did you know this? No. So, we, when we had, I think it's British Army, I can't remember exactly, but when we invented radar, um, the Germans thought that we could see in the dark, so we used to tell them that we ate our carrots. <laughs> and that, that's, that's, that's the reason you say carrots help you see in the dark. There's your <laughs> fun history, Milton. That's fantastic. <laughs> The reason why the middle finger is a swear is because the French needed their middle finger in order to pull back bows and out bows. And uh, what would happen is when we capture them, we'd cut off their middle finger. So <laughs> when they used to intimidate us, they'd be like, oh, we've still got it. We've still got it. That's why the middle finger is a swear word. Thank yeah, look at that. Is that Thank real? <laughs> that's, that's real. I want to believe that's so bad. That's so good. <laughs> Welcome, welcome to history with the apocalypse. <laughs> <laughs> so I've learned, I've learned two. Well, one new word. I knew, I knew next. But new words today. <laughs> Thank you. Best of dark, like dark web video history with the apocalyptic necrophiles. There's a series in that. You get a live stream yeah. going weekly, ten minutes, just ten minutes of you spitting facts. All videos you find on the dark web, like. On YouTube, I just talking. I love this. Yeah. Everyone else has their headphones on. I want to feel like I'm speaking into a microphone. Um, <laughs> just, it's just a bit of metal. Um, yeah. <laughs> 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 but um, 
all the videos you find like on the dark web talking about it on YouTube, like how scary it is. When you go on it, it's just a bunch of funky drug messes. Yeah. And the occasional murder here and there. Which isn't real. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> nah. <laughs> <laughs> Callum, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna task you with getting some questions through, Cal. <laughs> what you got? Um <laughs> What does it what does it mean to be a gore noise band? Gore grind. Gore noise, gore grind, gore noise, gore noise. What's the difference and slam? Because I've seen I've seen both and they seem somewhat similar. What's the, what's well, the difference between a slam? It needs to be a gore noise band. Well, I'll try to explain the difference. Um it's it's sort of like a political thing, like a political message type thing, because you see the really gory artwork, you see the really like messed up song titles, the really messed up lyrics. It's because if we don't, if we talk about it in a conventional, um, safe for work way, it's not going to get across, You've because no one's going to care. You've got to sort of shock people into listening. Like, if someone sees a political sign, like someone public protesting, saying, I don't know, like, free Palestine, whatever. That's just the first thing that came to my head. Um, like, the, no one's going to really listen. Like, everyone's going to look past it. But if you're holding up a sign with, like, a literal corpse on the front, people are going to be like, holy, holy shit, you know what I mean? Mm. People are actually going to pay attention type thing. It's, quite like it's a smoking people. kills logic thing, right? Like, with uh, cigarettes. Huh? Yeah, I've got yeah. cigarette packets, yeah. Yeah. Actually, that's a, well, that's a good way of describing it. It is. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> UK <laughs> government actually gore noise. I don't... <laughs> yeah. You buy the cigarettes, it then tells you that it's killing you, and you're like, oh, oh. I've got a smoke. No, that is honestly how it works. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. No, that's cool. So I guess that's sort of from the, the punk roots more so, is it? Yes, it, it, very, very much, yeah. Mm. Awesome. And, uh, I go on, sorry. Yeah, fuck you. But <laughs> <laughs> like the, the whole idea of it being gory and grindy and whatnot, we don't we, we don't agree with violence. Mm-hmm. It's just, like the the idea is is you're supposed to be mad at it, you know. We're we're singing about how mad we are at it. Yeah, you know. Like, I I let's use one of our songs, executed on sight. I don't really like the idea of that. <laughs> about being executed on a building site. Yeah, but like you know, you're singing about shit which like fucking affects every day, everyone in the world all the time. But when you hear it, it is just like noise, and it pisses you off to the average person. So the gore grind fans are the scariest people, and also the weirdest people. But like, it's just you're not supposed to agree with what we do. <laughs> no, it's very, it's very much like we're saying fuck you to convention, conventional music, fuck you to conventional authority. We're basically just saying this is what's happening in the world, this is reality, mm-hmm. and we don't agree. But the thing is, if you, if you like, don't show reality, if you just make everything out to be all happy and positive nothing's mm. gonna get them about it like we show gore like real life gore in our <laughs> in our artwork because we want to show what reality is really like like mm. in third world countries and even like just down the road like people getting stabbed that is what it looks like you know what i mean yeah yeah absolutely i think um interesting uh the way you sort of phrase that as well and tom just because obviously i've known you um for a while and and you've worked on the comedy stuff as well it's sort of that point that you're not necessarily and i think this kind of nuance is a bit lost on a i don't know at the moment especially in the online world it's a bit lost but you're not necessarily saying things because you mean them it could be like for example with comedy you're saying things because it's the fastest route to funny right and it's kind of like that but with shock value isn't it i I think yeah pretty much and a lot, a lot of bands do it. Like not just in gore grind. Like 
a lot of death metal bands, if you just look up death metal lyrics, most of the time it's singing about killing someone. Mm, coming you know? blood or whatever. <laughs> you, you don't want to come blood, but you know the whole song about coming blood. That, that's what that's one thing we actually do. Well, you we might do. not. Just some really pissing people. There's a big fucking issue within the death metal scene, the grime scene, that has a big hatred towards women, and I don't like that. Tom doesn't like them. No, nope. like you, you get so many songs singing about raping and killing women and all this shit. We wrote a song about women castrating a guy and feeding the genitals to her dog, called "A Night with Betty Swallows," <laughs> and like. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great name, man. <laughs> That's got to be it. Shit, man. Like, it's a fucking genre. You don't get many women in death metal or metal music in general. And mm. it's a fucking shame because a lot of these people want to go to these things, but there's songs blasting out. Like, fucking... Li- <laughs> I Come Blood yeah, as one of them. You could use Cannibal Corpse as a fine example. Yes, they don't agree with it, but when you hear the song names, it's like, oh, man, let's calm down a bit, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, another thing I want to talk about is obviously there's like a there's a comedy element to it, oh, yeah. but that's just to sort of like soften it to, mm. towards people who may be new to the sort of thing. Yeah, for sure. I think that that's a, a nice way of sort of getting people involved with it as well. From I guess from yeah. a background where they don't really yeah they don't understand the history of it or they're not sort of accustomed to the sound of it. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, and I, I I'm looking forward to seeing you guys on the road at some point because I imagine that works really well between. Sort of um, yeah. obviously having known what Tom's done in the past, like I can imagine that working very well. Yeah, it it, it will it will be fun. Yeah, <laughs> Hell yeah! But, I mean, I've seen a few of the videos, guys. If you if you're watching and you and you fancy having a look, um, is it on? Have you got your own YouTube channel? I saw some Facebook videos here and there. Yeah. So we do have a YouTube channel called the Proctophilic Necrophile. Obviously, we've got a Facebook called the Proctophilic Necrophile. We have an Instagram called called. Mm. Lowercase. But yeah, all, all of our lives, all of our live stuff so far is up on the Epoxyphilic Necro YouTube, uh, include because it's my old, it's my old company, including some of my old demos for my other gore stuff, um, and the entirety of my new EP for Come Far, an erotic display of religious perversion. Yeah. That's a good name. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> the, the whole album's just a, about the whole album's just about false accusations of rape and Christian and with Catholic Church being full of monsters. I love it. <laughs> and that's the thing. There's a message behind it. No matter how stupid the fucking name come for is, mm-hmm. there is still there is still a message behind it. Like there is hundred percent the message that he's put through <laughs> with it. Yeah, I mean the name the name grabs attention, doesn't it? And then you can follow through with the message from there, can't you? So everyone loves a bit of combat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the most like awkward yet enjoyable moment. It's pure <laughs> release, pure relief. <laughs> well, like, we find making this sort of music very therapeutic. <laughs> We both go, th- we, me, me and Tom, we both go through a lot of mental health stuff. Like, we both struggle quite a lot with everyday life and everything. So, every, we normally get together every Tuesday. We normally just, it's just therapeutic, really, being able to make the most brutal sound of music you can and being able to convey some sort of message through it and, like, sort of being able to show your anger towards the world in yeah. musical form it's sort of like imagine i don't know something way more conventional like thrash metal like it's like that but on a way more brutal scale you know mm-hmm. what i mean it's like way more faster way more you know messed up sounding way more experimental sounding it's just sort of a way for us to cut our anger out with like obviously we both go through yeah. you know, same things in the same yeah. way yeah yeah, it's a <clears throat> kind of a creative outlet as well. Obviously, I think um, I think Callum, you'll probably agree. It, for us as yeah. well, music is very therapeutic. Yeah, it's like being able to get our anger out without hurting ourselves, without hurting other people. You know, it's just a lot, a lot better to do that than to go through it with an unhealthy way. 
Really? Yeah, absolutely. And you're probably fine. You know, members of the crowd are, are in that same situation just from a, an audience perspective. It can be the same level of therapy for them. <clears throat> yeah, and we, we encourage that. We want, we want, we encourage that. We want, we want people to be able to find some sort of anger with our music and to be able to take all their anger out in the crowd in a safe way mm -hmm. while listening to the music. Absolutely. There's something really interesting <clears throat> to me about that. Like I, I always talk about it with the sort of the audience and the the connection with the crowd. It's 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 very strange, isn't it? That like it, it doesn't matter what style of music. Um, there's this sort of unique connection in a live room, like with an audience that doesn't exist anywhere else that I'm aware of in the world. Maybe with like mm -hmm. cults and shit. I don't know, but <laughs> like, or hypnotism. I don't know, but <laughs> it's that unique connection you have with an audience. One thing which I find, and this is more so me talking about my stuff but with live music as well there's it, my, my old man always used to say people have a stage presence you know like if you were to go to a gig and slash would walk out on stage everyone's going to be absolutely amazed even if he even if he goes on and plays crap people are still going to talk about how great it was they saw slash uh but like you know, and you do get, but we do get local bands that people go absolutely apeshit for. Mm -hmm. I I still find it shocking when I'm added onto a lineup when I see people sharing posts saying, "Oh my god, I get to see Tom again," yeah. and I'm there um, going, "I'm not that good. I just love I've and I will never ever slate myself for this. My mu musically, I'm not the best, but on stage, I am a fucking good performer." <laughs> Yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah, and, like, and it's it's heartwarming to see it shared out, isn't it? I think it's really nice. And like we have we have so we have so many people who enjoy enjoy the shit we do. Like um, you you do fucking electronic stuff. I do, yeah. But like we we have so many people who enjoy it, enjoy it in different ways and whatnot. Like fucking, like, if if you've never been, even if you don't like the music, if you've never been to like a death metal gig. Buy a ticket to your closest grotty, stinky underground venue where a band's playing called Maggot Infested Bum Cheeks. Go go watch it and definitely you'll walk out of the room and you will just say to yourself, I've got no idea what the hell I just watched. But I'm happy. <laughs> you know we were talking before the stream started, but we were talking about um I can't remember the name of the band exactly, but your your mate Carlos's band. Yes. And uh, like he he's he fucking tons of words and letters and X's. It's C C X B X like cranial blunt force. I well, I can't remember the whole thing. But I first saw them at Southwest Heavy Fest. Southwest Heavy Fest coming up next weekend, by the way, May fourth and fifth. I know you guys know Max and Charlie. I don't, oh. I don't care if they're not watching or if they are. We're but, both gonna be there. Yeah, we're gonna be watching because this year's <laughs> lineup absolutely stellar but southwest heavy fest 2019 <laughs> bit of shameless self-promotion self there i was promoting another person but this band bxbx whatever they were playing and we were all kind of stood at the back of the room and i tell you i cannot remember another band from that lineup you know and they were crap this band were god awful but i loved it so much like Carlos can't play like you can't play a note to save his life. But it's so good. <laughs> yeah. Like all he's doing, he's taught. He has taught the world, right? And all he does on bass is just that. And he's taught the world from doing that. It's quite, uh, that's it's fantastic. Mental. Right? <laughs> it is mental. Yeah. It's fucking bizarre. Like our our, our dream is to play, there's a festival over in the Czech Republic called Obscene Extreme. And mm. I'm sure any any metalhead has looked up videos of metal festivals and stuff and has seen the videos of the audience storming the stage. I mean, there's the Guttalax one, which is met, like went viral, but with all the audience storming the stage, and the music is just like that. <laughs> and it's just like that. Our dream is to play that festival. And the fact we've got so many friends who have played it is unreal because it turns mm. out it's really fucking easy, especially with this genre. It's loved by loads of people, especially those of us. 
Yeah. Oh, but Czechs, but Japanese love it as well. They Jack, do. Japan, yeah. if you, Japan loves the gore grinding scene. <clears throat> we're we're going to go to Japan. What? Play with fatuous rump. Yeah, play with fatuous lesbian tripping squirts. Yeah, we've got to do that. That sounds good. <laughs> 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 We, there's so many just bizarre bands, and I, 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 I think I said this on the first first live stream I done with you. It was either with you guys or with um Let's Talk Music, mm-hmm. but where it was what 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 to say to people who want to do live music? Just fucking put on your big big boy pants, pick up an instrument you can play, mm-hmm. even if you can't play it. Get a couple mates together, form a band, and give just give it a go. Yeah, man. You, yeah, you'll have tons of people. Uh, not to be a dick, but there's bound to be people who don't like you guys. There's people who love you guys. There's people who hate what we do. There's people who love what we do. There's people who hate my solo stuff. There's people who hate your solo stuff. There's, but there's always a bunch of people who love it. No matter what, you mm-hmm. can play the worst music in the world. People will love it. There's a great band going around Bristol at the moment called Absent Signifier, which is. Two, the two members of it are my friend T. Coles, who he's, he's released a book called Death Metal, which if you want to learn about death metal, it's a really good book. Give it a read from promoting other people again. But it's T. Coles and my mate, my other mate David, and they call it improvised metal music. And that is exactly what it is. It's two blokes on stage, one with a drum kit, the other one with a bass guitar and a massive pedal board. And they just play random notes. And they've only just started and they've already got massive gigs lined up. Because mm. people love the randomness. It's great. Yeah, yeah. I love it. Well, it's Everyone something genuine thinks. as well, isn't it? It feels like um, a lot of what you're saying there, especially, is that um, if you go out and you give it a go and you just try and you try and you, and you keep doing it and, and you produce something genuine from you, because that's where it's going to be unique, right? It's going to be sort of um, an expression of your own unique experiences through music. So yeah. no one else can do what you're doing. So hopefully, yeah. if you like it, other people might start to like it too. And, and then you start forming a crowd and you start having a good time with mates down at the shows. You hang out for some drinks after. Then next thing you know, you're playing on bigger and bigger stages. And this this group of mates is expanding more and more and more. And it's, yeah, it's really cool, mm-hmm. man. Oh, it's a, the, the, the underground and local scene is one of the best scenes in music. You know? mm. I, I prefer to spend 10 quid to go to a gig, see five bands, not knowing any of them, than to spend 70-odd quid to see Gene Simmons lip-sync one of his own songs. <laughs> yeah, man. Absolutely, on his 16th final tour. <laughs> yeah, 70 quid's quite cheap for Kiss, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to Kiss now or something. Gene Simmons is a money-hungry pig. I don't know, but I want to be buried in one of those Kiss coffins. Oh, no, the worst Kiss memorabilia is the air strip, the um, guitar strings for air guitars. Mate, you haven't heard of the, di- the discharge toilets. Uh, the um, the Ramstein dildo collection. <laughs> <laughs> no, That's not- going to be quite expansive. <laughs> yeah, the discharge toilet is great. <laughs> it's fucking amazing. <laughs> There's also a disclosed one. I-, I really want, you know, you know, on Facebook, you get like those, um, I'm going to say targeted ads, but it's always like a really crappy printed shirt that yeah. says, only legends were born on this day. Yeah, there, yeah. One going around. I don't know if it's still going around. There's this targeted ad where it was like a Hawaiian shirt company that would print your favourite band's logo on it. <laughs> oh, and, nice. For a lot of people, it was like a Hawaiian shirt that said Taylor Swift, Jerry Cinnamon, and all that. <laughs> but Jerry Cinnamon's ace. I love him. <laughs> <laughs> Cinnamon. But um, uh, but for mine, it was like. Literally a Hawaiian shirt with Cannibal Corpse logos on it. <laughs> um, it. I've never seen anything more wank in my life. That was so I, good. Cannibal Corpse gig in Bristol a while back. There was someone genuinely wearing it, and I couldn't <laughs> tell if someone was wearing it in all seriousness, like thinking it was like yeah. really cool, or if he was wearing it as he was taking a piss because it was an older bloke. Uh, no, no offense to the older blokes. They normally just <laughs> they're a little out on the yeah <laughs> on the <laughs> styling, should we say? <laughs> we, we've actually um we've we've been working on a sketch because we like we're we're working on a few more sketches to promote some of the songs that we're releasing and some of the bits we do. And one of them is Hawaiian Shirts Anonymous. 
I'll have to tell you. We'll we'll get you in on that one, Tom, and uh, we should get you in on that video. I think if we, I'll let you know when we're filming. If you have any Hawaiian shirts, it's gonna be a good Tom, one. You seem like the type to own Hawaiian shirts. Like Joseph, keep him entertained. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely have to do this Hawaiian shirt. We have a few sketches in mind actually. We've got a few that we want to do. We've got a Teletubbies based one. We've got the Hawaiian Shirts Anonymous one. Uh, we've got a few music videos in the works and stuff that I can't wait to work on. But the sketches are so much fun. If you guys watching haven't seen it yet, you need to see our chef's video on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> it's really good. Yes. Yes. Look at that. That's beautiful on, though. It looks like a log and steel pamper. Mm. You know, like <laughs> <laughs> Marie says off. just steal one of Aaron's shirts. <laughs> I don't know if Aaron has Hawaiian shirts or not, does he? he I, does. I think I have he does <laughs> yeah, I've seen him in a few actually. What am I on about? I think Stevie had some he for a while as well, didn't he? We I think that's what sparked the Hawaiian shirts anonymous meme. We have yeah. to do it. It'll be such a funny clip that. I think Aaron's got one. He's got the one black and white one, I think. Yeah. That's quite a nice one to be fair. That one's like it's it's not too in your face, is it? <laughs> it's manageable. <laughs> Um, I'm just going to catch up on a few comments, chaps. So, uh, we will go from... Where are we? Ah, Lisa says, uh, who... Ah, so, addressed to me, who made my stage coat? Uh, really want a coat like yours. Um, that was Abby Moxer. So, if you look up Abby X Jackets on Instagram, you'll find... Uh, she does custom paints on clothing. She does denim. She does leather. All that kind of stuff. Um, but, yeah, she did fantastic work on that one. Um... Gavin says Lou Reed famously couldn't sing. That's true. Um, another one that came to mind actually was Hendrix. Hendrix was all about the feeling of the music, I think. I never thought Hendrix had a particularly good singing voice, but um, fuck me, no. what a feeling that must have been seeing him live. That must have been amazing. Hendrix is the only person who, in my eyes, can make a guitar sing. Yes. Yeah, he didn't really need to use his voice particularly, did he? He, was, <laughs> he shouldn't have bothered. <laughs> Telling me a story, which I you got a fun fact about Hendrix. Here we go. Add oh. Your granddad knew and played Jimi Hendrix. Yes. He oh, did. wow. Oh, fuck. He did, yeah. He was in wow. a band. He can't eat. But you know the band that made that song about Kofi Pudding and who were all those about the years ago? Yeah. yeah. He formed that band. He's the reason why that song exists. Oh, Holy wow. shit. I'm not taking the piss. You can ask you can ask me that. Like, there's some some like that is like fucking real. <laughs> that is a real fact. I couldn't believe you. The more and more I find out about this man, the more I'm just amazed. Yeah, my family's weird. That <laughs> song is in my psyche at least once a week. I at least yeah. once a week that song just yeah. straight to the brain. That for making that band and then the singer for taking all of his money. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Always. <laughs> you can, you can uh, Marie like, says. Honestly, been uh, let me just say, been out of starting a band until recently when I just decided to do it. So awesome! That's really cool. Well done. Uh, let us know how it goes, Marie, and when you're when you're ready to hit the stage. Um, and finally, Tapman Charman says, "Yeah, it's true, man." Is that it is true, like that. Yeah. Ah, there you go, a relative. There we go. Fantastic. That's really cool, man. That's <laughs> that's a nice tidbit. <laughs> Callum, I'm going to send it your way. Have you got a quick fire round for us? Um, I quick fire quite a bit. <laughs> I backfire constantly. <laughs> if, if I don't like come shooting. <laughs> <laughs> go down the go down the old range and just shoot cum. <laughs> what? Okay, we'll do a quick fire one. Um. <laughs> Does coriander taste nice, or does it taste like soap? Like what? <laughs> coriander. Coriander. No, it tastes like shit. Yeah, but you're, I'm introducing you to foods. Like, this man's never had a full English breakfast. I know, and I want one. Yeah. I really want one. Co yeah. Coriander. coriander. Full English is, like, the best breakfast you can have. I really want one, but I've just never had one. Sure. What start. do you normally have for breakfast? What do you want to say? <laughs> no, no, you have to. I don't have crackers with marmite on them. Crackers with marmite? All right, okay. That's a snack. It's lovely. <laughs> it's lovely. It's marmite. Nice. No, marmite, you might as well lick a dog's rectum. <laughs> <laughs> marmite. I, 
think you once bought a bu- like bunch of twiglets, and I was like, oh, snacky food. And I put them <laughs> in my mouth, and I get, I put, oh, oh I think I would have preferred to eat my own feet. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a feat. I, I prefer Marmite with bread, I think, but it's got to be bread with Marmite. Toast. No, oh, mash, no, no. Mashed potato. Oh, no. If you ever have Marmite on mashed potato, oh my god. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> Or what? just some races, just some races as well. Oh, on races, I can on. see that working. Yeah, mm. that is vile. You are a heathen. <laughs> <laughs> that is. You know, you know, you know what? One of my one of my colleagues from work introduced me to. What busted on a cheesecake? That sounds vile as well. It's actually not that bad. It's no. quite on a cheesecake. Yeah, but... No, that'd be alright, wouldn't it? With watsits, the crisp watsits. You can With get what's it? You get the same taste by licking in between your toes. Oh, I'm with you there. I don't like what they look like fucked up toes as well. They I don't yeah. like what's this. Yeah, they're grim. Have you ever seen one of the videos of like of people using a foot scraper? No. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. You know, like whenever you go to an Italian restaurant, they're like, Oh, do you want some parmesan? They might as well be asking, do you want me to vomit on your food? No. Oh, so- parmesan's good. I, I I go through like a probably a block yeah. of parmesan a week. You see, every single week. To be important questions. Yeah, <laughs> these are the really important questions you were telling me. Hmm. Yeah. Lisa says, uh, "Try Herbalife. It's amazing." I have no idea what that is. Anybody? No idea. Herbalife. Herbalife. Probably like Marmite. It- it sounds like a remedy. I'm not sure. Uh, Gavin says, notes down Marmite and mashed potato as a potential band name. <laughs> Listen, my, it's just pure science, right? Because Marmite is basically just MSG. Is right? it? Yeah, literally. Basically. Okay. It's, 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 that micro sodium glutamate. Mono sodium glutamate. It's how they make MSG. Uh. MSG is made from yeast extract, which is what Marmite is. If you have MSG and like in powder, you know, the powdered MSG and lick it, it tastes yeah. like Marmite. We're learning so much today, boys. I just want to say we're learning a lot. Oh, it's like a, a formula thing, like a drink shake thingy, Herbalife. Ah, very nice. I'm on the uh, g at the moment. I want to get the uh, Meat Canyon flavour that's just come out, Callum. It looks horrible. <laughs> the flavour sounds nice. It's like uh, melon and... Oh, Christ, I can't remember, but it's the flavour's just called raw meat and it's all pink and yellow. It looks disgusting. <laughs> It'd be a lovely drink. It's basically Vaseline. It is Vaseline. Yeah. It's, it's for my... It's for my lips. Sorry, I just found a sticky object on my on my desk and I realised... <laughs> is Vaseline sticky or is it not? It feels more smooth than sticky. I feel like if I threw it at my phone at the moment, it's just going to stick. Yeah, because it would it's, stick, wouldn't it? But it's not sticky. It's, How would... it's... it's just a chunk of... Ah, uh, like, uh, yeah. So it's a, it's a, back to the um, Herbalife. It's a food replacement shake. With you. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Gavin says I knew a woman who did Herbalife. She farted all the time and pooped once a week. <laughs> Maybe that was just her though. I'm no nutritionist. That's actually the lyrics to one of the songs. <laughs> yeah. Inspiration, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We haven't released. Please, Herbalife farts. No. For real, though, how long till we can just take a pill and then we just shit little pellets and we don't need to eat anymore? We'll be like rabbit shit. Yeah, it'll be like tiny little pellets. You can just pick Probably it out whole... and throw it in the bin. Probably the Maybe. idea would be not to shit at all, where there's like zero waste. No, you'll waste. have to have some kind of refuse or waste. You'll have to have some kind of waste. If you have the perfect amount. Because it's like our poos are like really big. <laughs> if, if we... Especially yours, apparently, I don't <laughs> If, if, if we if we crack if, if we crack the toes, then we get smaller and smaller, and then my toilet won't overflow. <laughs> well, he is right. I, mean, <laughs> once I a do week. think one day we'll just be shitting pellets. I think and once a week we'll just we'll be perfect. Once a week, once a week. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, you got to think like evolutionarily when you're shitting, you're most vulnerable, aren't you? So. I'm just fine all yeah. the time. No, that is wrong. When you're you're the most vulnerable as a man when you're doing your cum face. <laughs> it's very similar. It's similar, yeah. I was gonna say. <laughs> you're really it's sliding <laughs> it's sliding past the prostate, so it's gotta be somewhat similar, isn't it? 
think I've ever gone into a portal or a portable, and I've been doing people literally like that, ready to fight someone who comes in. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? He's got a full guard in the fucking portal, eh? like. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm gonna go ham at something, right? This meme started going around a couple of years back of the portal door, and it said poop alone or poop with friends. Okay, every single fucking toilet you go to at a festival has that joke. It's not funny anymore. What is? <laughs> someone puts effort into it, such as a download. I think this year. There was a sticker of some bloke's face, and it said, "The anal bee tug of war champ." <laughs> <Love it. laughs> this guy printed out stickers of his, like one of his mates' face, put the anal bee tug of war champion, and it was in nearly every single portal in our. That is fairly impressive. Like, <laughs> also the concept concept itself is quite good. <laughs> jo- jo- did did your toilet overflow? This morning, yes. Oh, and last time you were in Bournemouth. <laughs> the most vulnerable I've ever been is when my toilet overflowed. I was literally... Were you sat the, on it at the top? In the pool. I, I just... It would not stop coming up. I had to go... I was like... <laughs> it won't go back down. I had to run out of the house and wait for my mum to rush home. I, I missed you in this life. Seems weird. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so basically... Long story short, my toilet overflowed. <laughs> that should be the name of this episode, Callum. I think when we put it out on YouTube later this year. Yeah, long story short, my toilet overflowed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Hell yeah. Day my toilet overflowed. One of the days your toilet overflowed. <laughs> 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 you might want to check that one, that. <laughs> It sounded like it hit the floor pretty hard, eh? <laughs> My pants have overflowed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, to be fair, your toilet won't overflow if you just don't use it. Yeah, you could. <laughs> Portable shit. But at the end of the day, your bum is... Your, your pants are like a bag. You well, can keep it all in there. And when you're done, you can take your pants off. Just Yeah, throw them away. Or you, you can lower them as well. That's an option. That's, yeah, that's, that's just cool. <laughs> Look, cavemen didn't have toilets. We don't really need them. We, we should really call to me cocktail. Yeah, we should. And what? <laughs> the, colo- the colostomy cocktail. <laughs> See, just how we make fucking song names. We just, he says something and I go, yeah, all right. That's a pretty good name. Like, <laughs> yeah. It's got the alliteration you need there. That's pretty good. Though. And it rhymes. Yeah. It's like, it's like, Colonoscopy cock cobbler. <laughs> oh no. Have you ever seen the when he's by ours? But they're just there talking about different band names. Yes. Like, it's only just recently come out. What, like um what was what was one of them? Goblin um, Pop. No, no, that was the one that the fucking Taylor Swift guy came up with. Go- Go- Gordon Ramsay's <laughs> Schlong. Oh yeah, and there was also um oh oh fuck me, I can't remember. That's what it was called, yeah. All I can remember is my toilet overflowing. <laughs> All I can think about is the loss of porcelain. <laughs> to be fair, it was problematic. <laughs> to, to people joining this live stream, hello, we're a popular necrophile, we're a serious normal. And my toilet overflowed. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't I'm release an EP not- just called And My Toilet Overflowed, <laughs> I'm going to shut up about my toilet overflowing. Uh, uh, at the end, like the shout outs or stuff we've got coming out, we'll just go toilet over. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to stop talking about it because it, it keeps making you laugh, so I'm going to keep saying it. <laughs> Hell yeah, dude. <laughs> Callum, I think we've got time for one more and then we should probably wrap it up because we've been going okay. over the hour. Let's see what you got. We're going with a new question which we developed over the weekend. <laughs> we developed in R and D over the weekend. Someone said, "Someone said it." We're like, "Why didn't we say that on the live streams?" Um, what, what would be your stripper song? Oh yeah, your stripper. I, I, I've got a couple of different songs in mind. Yeah. Right. So I could either have You Supper by Napalm Death for one second song. Is that because 
Oh, I'm done. <laughs> 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 Mr. Felt trousers, dude. It would be amazing. Walk back. Uh, no, the reason why you choose you suffer by napalm death is because you finish in like five seconds. It's a second <laughs> song, but you have to listen to it five times. <laughs> oh, right. Actually, you say, can we go another round? You play the song again, and you're finished by the end of the song again. <laughs> you do that live. Yeah, it's nice. Now, my stripper song, my stripper song would be Gastrointestinal Rape by Cerebral Incubation. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would go with, there's this band from, um, oh, I've played with them a couple times, but they were called really good stripper music, I find. Is it Last Days of Humanity? No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've, I've played with them as my solo stuff. I think they're called Regional One. <laughs> oh, I can't think of any of uh, They've recently done a cover of um, Last Days of Humanity. The, the one where it's like, here, 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 yeah, yeah. About that. <laughs> yeah, kryptonite. Yeah. <laughs> another, another stripper song. That song's about that. dementia. That would be a good one. <laughs> another song I had was the um, erotic diarrhea fantasy by Torso. Oh yeah. That'll yeah, wake him up. <laughs> that would that would be a really good song for me to actually for me to like get a lap dance while my toilet is overflowing. Uh, your stripper. <laughs> No, I'm not. <laughs> well, my, my stripper song would have to be Died in Your Arms by Cutting Foot. <laughs> Is that because you're a necrophile? Oh, it, it's, because, it's because I want people, you know, the <laughs> people up there go like, no, no. They give me my many worlds. Nah, I, I think if I was to if I was to get a lap dance to fall so close, I would probably I just bunched everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, yeah, that's that's why every single time I have a wank, I just listen to porno grind. Porno, <laughs> porno grind is a thing, like, <laughs> for those watching. <laughs> and that is gore grind, but with all of the serious taken out, and where you sing about sex. But porno grind is literally just like music where it's crap, but the song title is called like Big Penis. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Johnny oh. sins. <laughs> No, I'll go up my stripper song. What? It'd be no cock like horse cock. <laughs> I tell you what, my cock is by um, uh, cock and all torture. Oh, yeah, that'd be. Yeah. Callum, Callum, did you think of one in the end? Because we, we were asked it and I don't think we answered it. I don't think anyone did. I thought about <laughs> I it. Think I think someone just said. I didn't really think about it. I think it'd, it'd be funny to do something like. <laughs> I thought like Time by Hans Zimmer would be very fucking funny. I, th I think that, like, just so slow, <laughs> melodramatic, like, or like the Dune thing. Yeah. <laughs> the Dune soundtrack or something. Shit the oh. with blood, and when it says nothing but skin and bone, you just, uh, you rip off all your clothes and point to your Nah, legs. I tell you what, <laughs> having a wank to one of Alex's speeches about him being depressed. It's my favourite. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so depressed! Oh. <laughs> Me too. That's, that's, that's meme. Uh, I, I of all the songs in the world, I'd probably strip off to Wompy Pop's Quack Quack. Yeah, that's so, fair. If, you've not, if you've not heard it, go look up a band and you. But it's a perfect strip song. He kind of looks like a gibbon. He does, doesn't he? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, little duck song. Oh, oh okay. Wompy Pop's quack quack the duck song, yeah. The duck <laughs> stand, and he said to the man running the stand, hey. <laughs> <laughs> "You got a new lips and a mug, cock." <laughs> no, to be fair, if I was to think of the really like, there's a thing in metalcore bands where they always say, "Oh, we're like right in the middle of a song." They'll have They'll turn all of their pedals off. You know, little Benjamin Moody will be getting his acoustic guitar out. Um, and they, they just start talking about how sad it is. And, yeah, and, and, and Alex will start going, oh, I'm, I'm really sad. Are you sad? But You'll be all right. To, to We're sad. sad too. It's okay. And then... <laughs> 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 like metalcore music, where 
the message they're saying is completely good, and it's something which you completely agree oh, with. Oh, speaking of Alex, there he is. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but, like, just appeared on my phone. But, yeah, like, the, the stuff which they talk about is very meaningful, but after every single song, I mean, I'm just talking about all metalcore bands here, really. Yeah. I love metalcore. Deathcore does it as well, sometimes. Uh, not really. Deathcore's just like, I hate you because you broke up with me. <laughs> ah! <laughs> <laughs> I bet you won't, bet you won't. <laughs> I actually haven't, no. Oh, it's, uh, they're actually really good lyrics as well. So. That's got to be the thumbnail, <laughs> by the way, Gal. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to see all the lips below your waist so you can never think again. That's Did you sad. Get- did you get one, Callum, by the way? No, I didn't get hey. one. What do you got? What do you got? Um, Top of your you head, all go for the funny one. You need something you can put your heart and soul into. Right. I think. Right, I want to give a good lap dance. Yeah. Jeez. I don't want to give a lap I dance want, with I want, I want you to give me a good lap dance. But it's got to so. be, yeah. Um, I think I think Closer by Nine Inch Nails, I think would be a really good. <laughs> Gavin says, true story, I got a strip of the dance to No Surprises by Radiohead. Oh my god. <laughs> I did see what? that and I was like I think I was like I think it's Creep so by slow. Yeah, Creep uh, would be a good one. But Creep's got the good bit. Like, Creep's got the chorus to the Yeah. <laughs> no surprises. It's just like <laughs> <laughs> look you as literally you've got the stuff on No, do you think the reason why they he sings like that it'd be a good for a strip song is because you are extremely insecure about your dick song? Yes! That's what, <laughs> that's what I'm gonna weep. And that's the tagline cut. <laughs> Yeah, but the creep's got the chorus bit. It's got the, the yeah. Bit the chorus could, is probably right. no surprises. It's just Mellet, just so sad the whole way through. <laughs> <laughs> well, you mean you don't want to cry at the same time? I don't get it. <laughs> you don't want that. I don't think there's the drums in No Surprise. Surprises. Well, <laughs> that's talented. That that honestly must have taken at least a level of skill. Chaps, let's wrap this up. It's been an absolute pleasure having you on this evening. Where can we find you guys online? We've sort of already touched on your social media, but um, what have you got coming up? What can you tell us about? We have got a show mm. in the Cobblestones, May 24th. Be there or your toilet will overflow as well. <laughs> I'll make sure of it. <laughs> I've taught him well. <laughs> Hell yeah. May the 24th, Cobblestones. Yes. Is that Melt to the Masses? Yes. Oh, Melt to the Masses yes. semi-finals. And we also... Sorry. We also have a um, rehearsal tape that we have just recorded, and he's sucking me thumb. Um, we've just had a rehearsal <laughs> tape that we've just recorded, and we're going to put it out on Bandcamp if he can be fucking asked. And, <laughs> um, <laughs> and um, we also hopefully have a few splits coming out as well with the likes of Scat mentioned the bands. Can't mention the bands. Can't mention one. You, you can mention one if you want. Tank Gobbler? Tank Gobbler, yes. <laughs> yeah. We'll mention Tank Gobbler. And um, there is also, hopefully, some more EP splits coming out and like demos and whatnot, and then hopefully an album where we rant about pointless shit for an hour. Hell and, yeah. hate, and hating ourselves. And <laughs> also, hopefully, we'll get loads of gigs in the future and we'll be able to, you know, spaff on our instruments for you all. <laughs> yeah man well let us know if you guys get down to Bournemouth as well um yeah that I, I think Callum you, what was that band again and elect me you think um, be a good uh, have, have I think they're baseball I know the singers affordable. I know the singers from Boscombe I don't know about the rest of I the band because so. they didn't get many gigs but I honestly how many of those have you lost <laughs> those picks dude <laughs> he's lost quite a few they just but turn up these are years the later Peppard picks and they're flammable Flammable. When, when he plays Lawrence, they actually melt. Well, no. These, the Tom Peppard ones, I cannot play our Gorgon shows with them because they catch on fire. Yeah. Like, I wish I was taking the piss. I don't know what they printed them with. <laughs> they are actually that heavy. But, like, <laughs> if you take the lighter to it, this will just explode. Yeah. So I do not oh, use yeah. them live. It's like a scene from Tenacious D, man. That's... <laughs> I want to see it. <laughs> heavy to the point where 
if you play, he plays so heavy that the the pick catches on fire. Yeah. Like, <laughs> how heavy we are. <laughs> Hell yeah. You can't, you can't, you know, think of bands like Last Days of Humanity, Torso Fuck. Nah, that's like pop music. <laughs> We're way heavier. If it's <laughs> under 300 BPM. <laughs> yeah, if it's oh. under 300 BPM. <laughs> shit. But might, might as well call myself, like, you know, Taylor Sheeran Swift. Yeah. <laughs> Well, chaps, it's been an absolute pleasure having you on this evening. <laughs> Guys out there watching, please do check out A Proctophilic Necrophile if you get the chance. And also, go see them live. 24th of May, it's a live sound. You guys have got to experience it live to really understand what's going on, I believe. So if you can get there, the cobblestones in Bridgewater, get on down, go and support for Metal to the Masses. These guys are vying for Bloodstock Festival, which would be, to be honest, sounds like the perfect home for you guys. So you never know. Fingers crossed for you, boys. Um, to get to Bloodstock, watch the band who won on stage, and I'm just going to be there going, you're bastard. <laughs> <laughs> and the whole set just like... <laughs> yeah. I, I, I will storm the stage and be like, they stole our victory. <laughs> <laughs> uh, guys out there, if you're looking for a show for us, we are heading up to Norwich on May the 5th for the Rocksoft Festival at the Brickmakers. So please come on down to that if you can. We've never been there before, so... Come show us what you got, Norwich. We want to see what you're made of. Uh, after that, we're going to be announcing a tour real soon with uh, some very awesome bands. In fact, I don't want to say too much just yet, but keep your eyes out for that. Um, we've also got another acoustic video coming out very soon, so keep an eye on our YouTube channel. If you haven't seen the Rise acoustic version yet, we've had some good feedback, so go check it out if you haven't yet. Really appreciate it. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck's going on up there. But chaps, thank you again for coming on and thank you everyone for watching. We will see you again. <laughs> what the hell is that? <laughs> a shield. <laughs> it's a shield, yeah. I just, I, but when I looked up, I, I wasn't expecting that. I was looking down at like my notes and and then there was a shield and a is that Oh, it's a nine volt. Like, yeah, I'm used to those. Go on, make it. No, don't. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> thank you guys so much for yeah. watching. You boys, we'll see you again soon. Bye. <laughs> I think it's Bye. Uh, the video ended just as you licked that. It was perfect. <laughs>